Hey everybody, welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to discuss constructors. A constructor is a special method within a class that is automatically called when an object is instantiated. It's useful for assigning values to attributes as arguments. Before, when we were assigning attributes to an object, we would say, for example, car one dot make equals Ford. Well, with a constructor, we can do that automatically. Here's an example. This time, let's create a student class. Class student. I'll add a public access modifier. What attributes should students have? How about a name? Standard string name. Int age. Double GPA. Sounds good to me. Then if I need to create a student object, I would type the name of the class, student, a unique identifier for this specific object, let's say student1. Then to assign some of the attributes right away, I could use a constructor. We do have a constructor that is automatically called behind the scenes, but we could explicitly set one up. The constructor has the same name as the class. In this case, student, add a set of parentheses, add a set of curly braces. Think of this as a function. We can set up parameters. When we instantiate a student object, we will automatically call this function, the constructor, then pass arguments. Let's set up some parameters. We have standard string name, int age, double GPA. Then when I instantiate a student object, I will add a set of parentheses after the object name, then pass in my arguments. Let me just zoom in real quick. Okay, in order to instantiate a student object, we need to pass in a name, an age, and a GPA. So for the first student, student one's name will be SpongeBob. His age will be, I don't know how old SpongeBob is. Let's say he's 25. SpongeBob's GPA will be a solid 3.2. When we instantiate our student object, we will pass these values as arguments to the constructor. Now to assign these attributes with these parameters, we first need to select these attributes. In this example, I gave them the same name just to remove ambiguity. If I'm referring to these attributes, I will type this, then an arrow, name equals the name of the parameter, name. This name equals my name parameter. This arrow age equals my age parameter. This arrow GPA equals my GPA. So now let's test this. I will display student one's name, age, and GPA. Standard output student one dot name, add a new line, then we have age, then GPA. Okay, we got SpongeBob, he's 25 years old, his GPA is 3.2. So you can see that we don't need to necessarily add these values to these attributes manually. You can do that automatically with a constructor. So another way in which you may see this constructor set up is with the parameter names being different from the attribute names. Perhaps instead of name, age, and GPA, let's say X, Y, then Z. If the attribute names are different from the parameter names, you don't need the this keyword. You could say name equals X, age equals Y, GPA equals Z. And this would work too. If you prefer this way of doing things, you can do that. Uh, just my own personal preference, I like to use the this keyword and then keep my parameters the same. But that's just me. You do you. Let's create a couple more students. And it's kind of nice because we can reuse this constructor. Let's create student2. Two. Student, student2. Two. Student2 two will be Patrick. I don't know how old Patrick is. Let's say Patrick is 40. Uh, Patrick's GPA will be 1.5. Okay, to test this, let's display student 2's name, age, and GPA. Okay, we got Patrick, he's 40 years old, GPA is 1.5. One last student. Student, student 3, 
Student three will be Sandy. Sandy is uh, how about 21 years old. And Sandy's GPA is a perfect 4.0. Okay, now we'll display student three's name, age, GPA. Okay, we got Sandy. Her age is 21. GPA is four, well, 4.0. Let's do one last example just to reinforce our understanding of constructors. Let's create an entirely new class. Let's go back to our car class. I'm going to get rid of all of this. So we need a class. Class car. Set a curly braces. Add a semicolon to the end. I will add a public access modifier. In the last topic, we decided that cars had four attributes. A make, standard string make. A model, standard string model, int year, standard string color. Now we'll create a constructor for our car objects. It has the same name as the class name, car, set of parentheses, set of curly braces. We can set up some parameters. We have make, model, year, and color. I think I'm just going to copy this to save time. You can rename these if you want but I like to keep them the same. Then I will assign this arrow make equals make, this arrow model equals model, this arrow year equals year, this arrow color equals color. When we create a car object, we'll need to pass in these arguments. I will create car, car1, add a set of parentheses, pass in my arguments, a make, model, year, and color. I'll create a Chevy Corvette. The year will be 2022. The color is blue. I'm going to display the attributes, standard output, car1.make, I'll add a new line, then I will display the model, year, then color. Model, year, color. Car1 is a Chevy Corvette, the year is 2022, the color is blue. Let's create a second car, car, car2. Car2 will be a Ford Mustang, the year will be 2023, the color will be red. I will display car 2's attributes. We have a Ford Mustang, the year is 2023, the color is red. So yeah, that's a constructor everybody. A constructor is a special method that is automatically called when an object is instantiated. It's useful for assigning values to attributes as arguments. When you create an object from a class, add a set of parentheses, then add your arguments. Within the constructor, you can assign those arguments to the attributes of that class. In the next topic, we'll cover overloaded constructors. If you're looking for some additional practice, in the comments section down below, post a class that contains a constructor. And well, yeah, those are constructors in C++.